Hey girlies, welcome or welcome back to the Imani Forrester channel. As you know, Imani Forrester is the author of 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing, which you can find in the description box below. I'm Shanice, and Find Out Season is quite honestly the gift that keeps on giving. And the leopards are going to have to loosen their belts for this fresh course of faces. I've collected some more Fafo news stories of MAGA voters continuing to get everything they voted for. Take a look and have a laugh. We have some major breaking news. In an interview earlier today, Donald Trump said that he could not guarantee that his tariffs won't raise prices for the American people. Seriously, take a look. I want to delve into one of your signature promises on the campaign trail, which was to end inflation, to lower prices. You are now proposing tariffs against the United States' three biggest trading partners. Economists of all stripes say that ultimately consumers pay the price yeah, of tariffs. I don't believe Can it. you guarantee American families won't pay more? I can't guarantee anything. I can't guarantee tomorrow. Yeah, so congratulations to all of the Trump supporters out there. You voted for higher prices. For the past four years, you've been complaining about high prices and inflation, and then you turn around and vote for somebody who's promising higher prices. Like what? Truly, all of the Trump supporters got conned by the biggest con man of all time. They thought somehow, magically, Donald Trump was going to be able to lower their prices, but in reality, prices are gonna go up. So, good job, MAGA. Y'all can check out these reactions because some of these comments are hilarious. Magas, avocados, and tomatoes. I just had it out with this MAGA woman over the prices of avocados, tomatoes, tariffs, and the deportation of immigrants that pick our crops here in the United States and what that's going to do to prices. Because she's a firm believer that now Donald Trump is in office, the prices of everything's going to come down. And I straightened her out. I have to tell you about it. I can't do it here in the store, but it was good. To continue my story from the grocery store earlier tonight, I'm shopping in the vegetable and, I guess, fruit section, looking at fresh produce to buy. And there's this woman wearing a big MAGA shirt. She starts to speak to me, and she's starting to speak to me about the prices of the produce. And she says, don't I think they're too high? And then she says, aren't you glad Trump got elected so that prices are going to come down? I said, they are. I said, how are prices going to come down because Trump got elected? Does he have a magic wand? She says, no, looking at me in a serious, stern look. But he's a good businessman, and he knows how to bring prices down. Get rid of these Biden prices, this Bidenomics. So I said, he does. What is he going to do? I said, do you think these tariffs he's going to put on products coming in from Mexico and Canada and China are going to help us lower the food prices we see here in the United States? And when she says it's got to, it must. Somehow it will. I said, it will? I said, are you sure? She's, and she says, I know. Well, Trump, Trump's doing it. Trump says it will, so it will. And I'm thinking, God help this woman. Poor thing is clueless. She is another one of those burned out light bulbs and the filament is broken in a thousand pieces. So I said, listen, I said, if tariffs go on products coming in from out of the country, you and I are gonna pay higher prices. I said, the co company importing the products are gonna pass those higher prices on to us. She says, no, 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 no. Mexico and China are gonna pay for it. I said, no, sweetie, that's not the way it works. She said, yes, it is. Yes, it, that's what Trump said. It's like. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Like one of my lowest students said, you can't get them to do anything they need to do. But she insisted that China and Mexico were going to pay for these tariffs and that this was going to bring prices down. So I asked her, is there anything else Trump is going to do that help bring prices down? She said, well, she really wasn't sure. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you think it's a good idea to deport all the undocumented workers in the United States that are picking all the crops on our farms. He said, well, yeah, that's a good idea. They're, 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 they're here illegal. They're, many of them are criminals. I said, they are. He said, well, Trump said they were. I said, so who is going to pick the crops in the United States and they supply around 40% or 50% of the workforce to pick all the crops? Who's going to go out and pick those crops? What do you think that's going to do to prices in the grocery stores that you and I are paying if the crops can't get picked 
and there's nobody to do it. I said, are you going to go out and pick the crops? I said, who's going to go out and pick these crops? I said, Americans don't want to go out and pick these crops. She kind of looked at me like, I said, yeah, the crops. Who's going to grow the crops? Who's going to pick the crops? And she looked like dumbfounded, like she was clueless. Again, burned out light bulb, no filaments at all. You can shake it, and you know, when you shake, the filaments are all loose. So, you know, th th this is what we're dealing with. They've listened to too much Fox, too much whatever, and they've heard it repeated and repeated and repeated. And they're all going to F, you know, FAFO. They're all fucked around and find out, you know. They're not going to like these prices they see. And then also in the interview Trump did on Meet the Press with Kristen Welker, she asked him, can you guarantee your tariffs won't raise prices on the American consumer? And Trump said, no, I cannot guarantee. I can't guarantee tomorrow. There you have it. Love to hear from my Democrats and my maggots, my crazies and my cuckoos. I'm waiting for these prices to go down, and especially all those gas prices when we get 63% of our oil imported from Canada and Mexico. Mm-hmm. 25% tariffs on the oil coming in is really going to reduce the gas prices. Boy, y'all bought Y'all bought the snake oil, all I got to say. You love what that orange Jesus has got to say. Here from my Democrats, my maggots, my crazies, and my cuckoos, let me know what you think. But tariffs are not going to lower prices on food in the grocery store. And deporting all the undocumented workers that work on the farms are going to certainly not lower the price in the grocery store. Only go, go up. The complete opposite of what Trump told all these people that were gullible enough to vote for him and believe this stuff when it's just not true and not remotely correct. There you have it. Orange Jesus and burned out light bulbs. What do you get? The result we got. I can't wait to see their faces when these inflation's out of control. Oof. Well, thoughts and tariffs, I guess. Seems like she's in for a rude awakening when Trump goes through with his plans to tariff imports from the top three trading partners of the United States and simultaneously acts as migrant workers by rounding them up and deporting them. And on that note... Parents who might be here illegally, but yeah. the kids are mm -hmm. here legally. Your borders You're are... You're talking Tom about Holman. separation. Yeah, well, I mean, there are two aspects to this. Your border czar, Tom Homan, said they can be deported together. Correct. Is that the plan? Well, that way you keep the... No, well... I don't want to be breaking up families. So the only way you don't break up the family is you keep them together and you have to send them all back. Even kids who are here legally? Well, well, what you're going to do if they want to stay with the father? Look, we have to have rules and regulations. I might be deported because I'm a naturalized citizen. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Miller, who is Donald Trump's chief, deputy chief of staff, has said that they're going to embark on a denaturalization program. So I could be deported. Uh, my citizenship could be taken away. And my children could be deported because they have birthright citizenship. So this is not what the country voted for. Let's be very clear. Americans voted for Trump because of groceries, because of lowering costs. He has not talked about that one bit. What this country did not vote for is for, to deport the, the 11 million undocumented immigrants who do critical work for our economy, who have injected $7 trillion into our economy. And what Americans want is a solution to immigration. They want expanded legal pathways, and they do want more stronger, smart, border security, which is exactly what Democrats are talking about. And Democrats have always been the ones willing to work for, with Republicans right. on a solution. And it's been Republicans that have always pulled the rug from under our feet. Well, 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 looks like we got about a week's worth of content just on that interview alone. You know, the interview with Daddy Dumpy Pants on Meet the Press on Sunday. Yes, yes, that interview. He said so many things. But let's talk about them mass deportations he spoke of. Specifically, that birthright citizenship you get here in America. You know, the 14th Amendment that states if you were born on this land, you are automatically a citizen. Oh, he wants to do away with that. He even said he tried to do with it, away with it last time. He was in the White House. Only COVID got in his way. That's what daddy say, yes, that's what daddy say. Mm.
Dangerous ground he is playing on, taking away birthright citizenship. Where does it end? Is he only talking about those children under the age of 18 now? Or is he coming for everyone, no matter their age at all, if their parents were immigrants? And wouldn't that include him, since his parents were immigrants in this great land? And even some of his children, I believe, that would include. Or are we only talking about brown skin immigrants? I wonder, he's left so many doors open with so many avenues in which to travel to get these agendas done. Hmm, time will tell, time will tell. Well, we knew it was coming, right? On Meet the Press, Donald Trump confirmed that he is going to, through executive action, seek to end birthright citizenship. This is something that is expressly protected under the 14th Amendment, so it will definitely face legal challenges, but his stance is clear. If two undocumented people came in and had a baby on U.S. soil, that child is given American citizenship, and that is the case in, like, dozens of countries. It's not just America, even though that's what he said. That's a lie. Uh, but he is going to send those people back as well. And it's all under the guise of, well, I don't want to separate a family. So if they're here illegally, then we're going to send the children back as well. Um, but this is something that we told you was going to happen. This is part of the FAFO movement uh, for all those people that voted for Donald Trump. Potentially family members or people in your community who are American citizens are at risk of being deported, even though they have been American citizens their entire lives. I don't care if you like it or not. It's legal. It is legal. You can get rid of illegals who are committing criminal acts. I don't think many people are going to have a problem with that. But he's starting to turn on American citizens. It's not about whether you're here legally or illegally. It's about the color of your skin and your ethnic background that he wants to get rid of you. So uh, FAFO, here we go. I mean, we knew this was going to happen, but he's confirming that through executive order, he is going to send American citizens back to a homeland they have never, ever known. Hi, folks. I hope that your weekend was good. Um, it's about 30, 40 days from the new administration coming in. And, you know, among the many things I wanted to talk about as regards it, um, if it hasn't been clear from the other videos, I'm sort of taken aback by the number of Latinos who have voted for uh, Donald and, you know, what can I say other than that seems to be real support? I don't think that's imaginary support. Those are real round Latino people like myself who, unlike me, they, they chose to support him. Now, one of the fundamentally wrong things I see here, or like, let's say fundamentally problematic things is that I can't help but see this as sort of this uh, fantasy exercise in like white face, which like already that, com you know, there's some kind of fighting words there, but what sort of Latino would vote for somebody who, yeah, they're, okay, they're, they're anti-illegal Latino, you know, they're, this character says, he doesn't want the illegals in, but the subtext there is that the legal Latinos are, they're going to be left alone. Now, I absolutely do not believe that. And this is sort of where a lot of my beef stems with this sort of thought process of, of Latino people having voted for him. I don't understand what planet of trust or what sort of information y'all have that I don't, where you think, that if you look anything like me, or if you look browner than me, or you know, you're even lighter skinned than me, but you're still Latino, that you're not gonna be scrutinized and profiled in a more intense way than you probably already have been in your lifetime. Um, you know, I have the benefit of <laughs> having uh, having good speech as I've been told in the past by sort of uh, un unnamed characters, by, but, you know, this is going to be such 
a dragnet of profiling for the next, not just 30 days, 60 days in which, you know, Donald plans to cleanse the landscape of illegal Latinos and other illegals, but this is going to go on for four years. And this is the, the implication is that it, it goes on sort of until there's a more sympathetic administration that comes in and says like, okay, now we're going to sort of, you know, profile and blame other people. You know, there's, there's always a rotating door of, of profiling going on, but yeah, I, I want to hear your comments on it. Like, I want to hear from my, my fellow brown Latino people. Like, uh, why are you thinking that this is going to not affect you? That you're not, how do you believe that you're immune from the skeptical looks and that you're not a few insane, chaotic interactions away from the police about where's your passport? So I'll give you that as some food for thought. Thank you. My sympathies only go as far as the folks who didn't vote to make other people's lives worse. And to the people who did vote to deport their own families, well, hope you don't get voters' remorse if this happens. And you know I'm being this, I'm a- One, eight, three, 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 eight, three, one, four, six, five. Call me. Hello, Ice? Yes, I got one. Apparently, the veterans are going to be feeling it too because what's on the chopping block for them doesn't look pretty. But everyone, including other veterans, tried to warn them. Well, the fuck around and find out is continuing in my comments, and I would just like to put this out there to all of you MAGA cucks out there, and especially you MAGA veterans, uh, that Trump will be cutting at minimum $17.4 billion from VA, VA funding, and VA disability. And to all of you who are on here screaming, oh, he's only trimming the programs that don't work, you do realize that in his last term, he cut $30 billion from VA disability alone. Fuck around and find out continues. You know, I am old enough and I hope wise enough to hear what someone says and to take them at their word. On page 640 until 651, Project 2021 clearly lays out the cuts that they are going to make in veterans benefits. This article shows that this faux doge program is planning on cutting $120 billion from veterans benefits, specifically healthcare benefits. Now this doesn't strike me as unusual because I heard what they said and I believed what they said. I served in Operation Desert Storm and Operation Desert Shield. I served honorably for a long time. I came back with tinnitus and with PTSD. As a result, I have 70% disability. I serve this nation and I am entitled to the benefits that I have received as a result of my service. There are millions of veterans who heard what Donald Trump said and what Project 2025 said and who knew what Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy were about and they voted for Trump anyway. This is someone who was prominent in their vote for Trump. And this is what he said to justify, to justify his support for Donald Trump. Many people have reached out to me and asked me, Tommy, why did you start Veterans for Trump 2024.com? I'm happy to share that answer with you. I was in the world's greatest Navy on 9-11. And like so many other people, I saw the horrific news on the television and I immediately volunteered. But when I returned home, I realized that some of the people that I deployed with didn't return home the same. And some of them didn't return at all. And I also went to the hospital several times and saw so many returning service members who were missing limbs or had invisible wounds. And I always told myself and them the same thing. Your service is noble. Your service is meaningful. And that what you did and what you lost and everything, it was, it was worthwhile for our country. Then, the Harris-Biden administration had that horrible exit from Afghanistan. So if we veterans who served honorably, who did what we were supposed to do, if we lose our benefits, not only should we blame Vivek Ramaswamy, 
Elon Musk, and Donald Trump. But we should also blame this fool. This fool is now in the phase of F-A-F-O. Fuck around and find out. So that's all I have for y'all today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Fafo Tea. Leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.